Hi, how you going? In this video, I'll be talking about my most anticipated Souls-like games of 2024. We have quite a few cool titles coming and I want to highlight the ones that I'm particularly interested in. Every single game I will be talking about here captured me one way or another. Subscribe to the channel if you want more Souls-like, Soulsborne games related content. And that's pretty much it for the intro, let's start. And first up, I have Deathbound. I'm actually thinking about making a separate video about Deathbound because there's a demo available on Steam. It's like an hour-long demo and I finished it a couple of times, quite liked it and I can't wait to play the whole thing. So in Deathbound you play as an entity that can sorta of possess different characters, quite similar to Mortal Shell but with a twist. Each character has their own characteristics, their own little skill trees and each one of them represents a certain archetype, like an RPG trope. There's a bulwark with lots of poise, wielding a hammer, a fast rogue type character with daggers and a hand crossbow, a knight wielding a shield that gives him the ability to parry, and a few more. What I find really interesting is that you can switch between your characters on the go and it's actually an essential gameplay mechanic. For example, you start a combo with a rogue and after a few hits switch to the tank to finish your combo chain with a hammer smash, that deals massive damage. And despite not being a big fan of cartoony looks, I really enjoyed the vibe in Deathbound and the setting is quite interesting too. It's like a futuristic post-apocalyptic world but everyone's medieval. I don't want to go into too much detail in this video and break down every single in-game mechanic, but I'll just say that I liked what I played and I can't wait to check the game out. It's coming out sometime in 2024. And the next one's called Flintlock The Siege of Dawn. It's a game developed by A44, people responsible for Ashen, and I've already mentioned it once in my most anticipated games of 2023 video, but the game didn't come out in 2023, so one more go I guess. In Flintlock you play as a pre-made character and their fox looking animal friend and it looks like the combat and moving around the world outside combat will involve controlling both characters which if done right can result in, you know, high octane and satisfying gameplay. It almost looks like a hack and slash action RPG but it's been confirmed that Flintlock will have at least some of the souls mechanics like bonfires and currency that you lose on death with one chance to pick it back up. There will also be a difficulty slider and I don't know if it's a good thing. I guess it can be a good way to appeal to broader audiences but properly balancing harder difficulty is an incredibly difficult task and I think pumping up numbers, you know, like making enemies chunkier, making them deal more damage is not always a way to go. God of War's hardest difficulty for example was abysmal. Anyways, Flintlock is coming out sometime around the third quarter of 2024 and I want to play it a lot. It has swords, it has Flintlock guns and it looks like it will be a very dynamic fast paced game. And next up I've got Inotria Last Song. It's a game set in sunny Italy and based on Italian folklore. The emphasis of it is that the main character can wear different masks and each mask changes the player's abilities and provides various skill trees that the players could choose abilities from. I really like the way the world looks in this one and despite loving dark fantasy and you know gnarly grim shit, I think it's a nice change to have a bright and sunny premise in a Souls-like for once. Based on the gameplay footage I've seen, combat still has ways to go and looks stiff and janky but as far as I know there will be a closed beta test where the devs could gather useful feedback from the community and polish the game further. And Notria The Last Song is another Unreal Engine 5 Souls-like and will be released for PC, PS5 and Xbox Series S and X on June 22nd. And hey, before we continue, if you want to see more Soulsborne Souls-like related content such as game reviews, updates and streams in your feed, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to get notified when I upload. It supports the channel greatly. Likes, shares and comments are always appreciated too. Thank you very much, back to the video now. And the next one I'm going to talk about is called Phantom Blade Zero. And based on the trailers I've seen, it looks like something you get if Sekiro and Neo have a baby while Bleak Faith Forsaken is just hanging about nearby. There's this theme of Chinese folklore mixed with grimy and depressive steampunk kick to it. I think Phantom Blade Zero is one of those games that look nearly impossible to play. So much is going on at the same time and of course we need to see some uninterrupted combat footage to draw any conclusions but the setting, the vibe, the color palette got my attention and I'm super excited for more news and more footage. It's just really hard to say if what we see in the available videos is scripted sequences or actual gameplay. The game is scheduled for release sometime in 2024 so I'm sure we'll see something new very soon.
before we move on to number one, which is quite an obvious pick, by the way, I'd like to mention the first Berserker, Kazan or Kazan, I don't know. It's a hardcore action RPG developed by Nexon Studio. You play as Kazan, the great general of the Pell Loss Empire, who overcame death and now seeks vengeance on his enemies. It doesn't really say that much about the game, but here's how it looks. From what I've learned from various articles, it's gonna be a mission-based game similar to Neo 1 and 2 or Wulong Fallen Dynasty, which can be a bum out to some people, but I personally don't think it's an issue. Neo games stand as a proof that mission-based Souls-like games do work and can be engaging, addictive and fun. Unfortunately, there's no release date for First Berserker Kazan and it just says coming soon on its Steam page so there's no indication whatsoever that it's actually coming this year. But since we don't have anyone stating that the game will be released in 2025 or something, I decided to mention it anyways and I'm super excited for more news. And at number one, I've got Black Myth Wukong, obviously, it's a third-person action RPG set in 7th century China and it's loosely based on Journey to the West. You play as a famous monkey king, an immortal being blessed with unmatched superhuman strength and speed, various superpowers and abilities. Black Myth Wukong will be a mission-based game as well, and according to various sources, some levels will be longer than the others, but the concept is this. You go in, explore the map, fight enemies, there are some secrets to find and even secret bosses sometimes. Then you face the main boss of the area, defeat them and go back to the in-game menu to select your new mission. Just like in Sekiro, your character has only one weapon, but through unlocking various abilities, the game will let you tailor your own adventure the way you want and give you the ability to tackle all the challenges the way you want with various obtainable skills. Of course, we'll have to play the game first to see if it's as good as some people who played it already claim it to be, but I hope it will be a breakout hit of 2024. So those are six new Souls-like games that are coming in 2024. I'll be watching them all very closely for updates and new gameplay videos, and I suggest you do the same. 2023 was a hell of a year for Souls-likes and it will be very hard to beat, but we have some very strong contenders on our hands, so I guess we'll see how it all plays out. Let me know in the comments which one of these games caught your attention the most. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like or maybe even share it with friends. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MightyMelvo. All the links are in the description. Thanks for watching. See ya in the next one.